Hello, this is Dr. Benjamin Norris from the Chemistry Department at Frostburg State University. In this video, I'm going to talk about the chemistry of disulfides. Uh, in a previous video, I talked about the synthesis of disulfides from thiols uh, by uh, mild oxidation conditions. And so, for example, uh, we can synthesize uh, a disulfide from ethane thiol just by reaction with mild oxidizing agent bromine. In, um, in the cellular world, the oxidizing agents uh, can be all kinds of things. Uh, and those include uh, various cofactors and, and whatnot. <clears throat> the ability of disulfides to form upon oxidation actually makes thiols a useful uh, reagent or useful protecting or protector or antioxidant from oxidizing damage. And one uh, such thiol that can protect against oxidation is glutathione. Glutathione is a tripeptide, and it's got this cysteine uh, amino acid in it with this sulfide or with this thiol functional group. And uh, we're actually just going to, to cheat and represent glutathione uh, with the, the, the letters GSH. Um, but upon oxidation by a variety of things, reactive oxygen species, uh, other kinds of reagents, glutathione actually oxidizes to the sulfide, which I'm not going to, to draw, but we would represent GSSG. So the thiol and cysteine becomes a sulfide. In fact, cysteine as an amino acid is quite special in its ability to, to form uh, disulfides. And there are a number of, let's, there's cysteine. Let's get another one of you. There are a number of places in uh, living organisms where this disulfide by between two cysteine molecules is an important uh, structural feature and a really important uh, place for these uh, disulfide bonds or disulfide bridges is in the tertiary structure of proteins. So this is me uh, sketching out a uh, really kind of lazy protein tertiary structure. But these tertiary structures of protein can just be held together by disulfide bridges, which is not letting me select the, the disulfide, but these disulfide bridges can hold the tertiary structure of the protein together. Uh, and, and this is responsible for the different shapes of proteins, both enzymes with different functions and structural proteins like your hair. So if your hair is straight, like mine, you have disulfide bridges in one place that keeps the proteins in your hair nice and straight. If you have curly hair, your disulfide bonds are in different places to add that curl to the hair. When you get your hair permed, you're having your disulfide bonds chemically broken and put back together in a different way with a different shape. So you learn something about hair care, uh, learning about disulfides. Now let's talk a little bit about reactions of disulfides. Um, in terms of reactions of disulfides, uh, one thing that they can do is be reduced. There are lots of reducing agents that will reduce a disulfide back to its corresponding thiols. And it just turns out, like I said, lots of reducing agents will do this. Let's grab ethane thiol here. Uh, so reducing agents will do this include things like sodium borohydride, include uh, sodium metal, include zinc and hydrochloric acid, 
include in a biological sense NADH and proton sources um, and appropriate reductase enzymes. Uh, lots of different reducing agents can do this. Disulfides are actually uh, pretty reasonable electrophiles, and in fact, we covered uh, in the I covered in a video on sulfides the uh, reactivity of disulfides with things like Grignard reagents to form unsymmetric to form unsymmetric. Uh, sulfides. Other nucleophiles could work as well. Um, you could use amines, uh, and there's an important, um, some important biochemical processes that use other uh, sulfides or thiols or, or thiolate anions. So this concludes my uh, brief video on the chemistry of disulfides. They can be synthesized by oxidation, uh, reduced back to the thiols, or they can react as electrophiles with other kinds of nucleophiles. Thank you for watching.